to also play a bit with, uh, with uh, some awareness campaigns. So there's lots of artistic projects around, um, you know, playing with the idea of national uh, when you watch football, you know, what will happen if you make a costume where German and Polish eagle are kissing each other in front of your chest. So, you know, like uh, trying to, to put the North and South Korea pants in one. Uh, so to, to, to play a lot of with the... Uh, uh, with the awareness of uh, this post project called Transnational Network. But this, this is an image. Eh? And then we came to the idea, okay, football is over, the show must go on. And what to do with all these people that starts now to inhabit the park? They start to come, to do picnic, to come with the family, to uh, exchange the toys. So the dynam social dynamic become uh, really interesting. And we just decide to create some kind of marketplace on, on the weekends or every second weekends, and to try to just juxtaposition this diverse community. What doesn't mean that we want to involve everybody and do the participatory uh, planning and, and, and uh, whatever, some, some utopian uh, thing, but to rethink what is this really par participation, what does it mean? In Germany, this word also participation is now all, all around in all the media. And yeah, so we, we, we analyze what we did with the students today, analyze the area very deeply and find out that this kind of people is a prototypical uh, um, uh, member of community because this was industrial area and there was a lot of people uh, working in Siemens and there was a lot of people that knows how to do something. Yeah. But they were put on the marginalized uh, uh, edge of, of society because they were get they, they are old enough, they don't speak English, they're kind of losers of transition, but also possessing really interesting skills. And we try to move them out from the, from the inner courtyards to come to the market and to simply fix your mixer that does not work. So to, to question this throwaway culture and to offer the market as a place of um, not just consumption, but maybe service and to define what service could be. Eh? So this new labor, this all starts from this labor question. Yeah? So this was our pedagogical role. And then we start to, to discover some invisible heroes, some people that, uh, uh, that really uh, had some fantastic skills, like this guy that could copy your pants if you just give him uh, old ones, you know, so thinking 3D, 2D in one. You know, you know how it's complicated to make a pants if you don't know descriptive geometry. It's all well. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just like yeah, just okay. uh, it's more cold, now, I feel like, but maybe some sofa for you. Uh, and then, then we start uh, uh, to also think about which kind of entrepreneurial activities are possible, which kind of services are, are uh, uh, we can talk about, you know. So this lady that anyway cuts the hair in a in the companies of the people or on um, uh, at your home, if you're just in uh, uh, Colter, it's a mobile uh, haircut studio. She found it interesting to cut the hair on the on the market because there's zero costs. Uh, weather is nice. There is a stage. There is music, <coughs> and she can cut around ten people per day. In a relax, relax, her kid is playing in a player. So you know, you you combine the free time and work in one. So you know, this is what we call social entrepreneurship. But we were questioning this, you know. And then this was kind of more self-initiative, but there was other ones we realized, hey, everybody comes with a bike and needs just a bit of the oil in the... Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, but it's too much, it's too much. Yeah, too much. Because I have to see the... the but it's okay. Don't worry, this is all on the TV, it's going to look great. <laughs> and now it's, now it's just like... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good, it's good, good. And, uh, and uh, you work, I work, and then uh, all goes all goes parallel. This I want to, to mention the that this developing the social entrepreneurs and sometimes it's not your great individual idea, but here we get different people together, some bike en enthusiasts, uh, some uh, people uh, or pe people from the youth center that has to uh, in Germany do some kind of uh, social hours for doing something bad. You know, if you just I don't know, if you, uh, for example, the last kid that was uh, just small uh, digression, the last kid that was uh, doing social hours with us was uh, steal stealing Mercedes signs from the cars. And a good job, I, I did it also, but he get catched from police, and then uh, in order to give something back to society, he has to fix the bikes on the market. 
he has to do for us 16 hours or something. So th these programs are also a very nice source of labor, uh, and but uh, also some kind of very soft punishment for uh, for uh, so. Uh, Try to think about entrepreneurship not just as an Excel tabel of uh, I buy this and sell it here and include uh, disabled people, but also as a bigger <laughs> system. Yeah? And then we realize also there is a, this uh, bull uh, petong. I don't know this if it's really popular sport, but in Berlin I don't know why. And anyway, this is a Mediterranean sport has nothing to do with Berlin, but somehow uh, I think these Huguenots and, and uh, these old French people that brought it here, but. Problem is, if you notice, this is a sport of old people, especially the old people that drink wine, you know, and then they like to, you know, drink wine and make some kind of whole philosophy of, li of, of, of life because they know how to play this game. Uh, just to tell you, it's not easy. You know, it looks like easy. Yeah, there's some small ball, and who is cl uh, closer wins. No, no, no. There is a aggressive movement. Uh, there is a, you know, you can be the close, close, and his ball just come and takes you out. You know, there is this kind of very dramatic noise. So we try to invite younger people to play, to learn from them, and they, as you see, this kind of alcohol group, they sit on this bench there, and they just, they're like a, uh, like a semaphore, you know, like they're just bad, bad, what you did, uh, here good, here good. So we gave them this stage to feel kind of honored and proud that they, and this is all uh, happening in a public space, so it's not any, uh, so did this young youngsters now, uh, uh, we managed to create a bull um, um, association somehow of the park and now it's in the process of registering, we maybe try to play from some bottom league, you know, because you have to start somewhere. And can you believe there's a league of that? You know? so <laughs> I, I also did not know much. My job is to create a lamp for a night uh, uh, game, so that's my next job. So this is kind of reclaiming the space of interaction because <laughs> fragmentation also comes from the fact that somebody some kind of reclaim stuff and say this is the bullo drone we play here we drink wine if you join just move you know there is so we, we try to uh, do this always this hybrid social tensions but can lead to something good also here we manage the one we did not manage I won't show of course uh, and then the, the market also slowly it was not really planned but become a stage for uh, some kind of local bands that come say I want to play I don't need any money I will just need the, the hat to go around and collect uh, uh, money like a traditional market way of uh, dealing with musicians and then slowly again was not clear who, who is audience that can dance and enjoy and who can be in the park and just listen music because you know like a concert or sometimes comes with an entrance fee of course not here but People, it was really interesting for people to ask, can I go inside to listen concert or should I stay outside? So it was this like a idea of music for free uh, being the, the interesting way of integration. Yeah? And these people were so happy to have a chance to, to uh, play in front of some, somebody because they're you know, just small small band from it. Market is going, this is established, running, uh, uh, I won't tell you much, but what is transformational power in it is that it's now more as a platform. So now the neighborhood initiatives and not just neighborhood also from the whole Berlin will come to us and say can we plug into your we have idea or we have so this becomes interesting now. And I'll just show one e uh, example of one project that is parasite of the market which <coughs> I was basically running. It's called Clash Over Trash. It's a campaign as you see on the left corner this is the result of the human densification, you know, more trash. Very simple problem of uh, from from our part to the till Kiev uh, inner courtyards. So big. So we were trying to make a kind of campaign to especially uh, deal with the younger people because all this kind of uh, uh, stuff here is, you know, like some. Uh, uh, plastic from grass, some uh, beer tops, some uh, left. Many people does not consider this as a trash and they leave it just in the park or, you know, uh, after nice picnicking. So we're trying to have a language of use and not only to deal with uh, uh, what is in Germany called Ordnungsamt. This is a communal police, you know, which can come and just they're dealing just with the punishment. They just give you uh, this, please pay because you were. So we're trying to bridge this gap in between not having information what is allowed or not and being punished. So it's a kind of campaign to uh, for part. And <laughs> also great architect has sometimes to uh, to take the, his uh, favorite uh, machine 
And then I go around the park and really bother people. Like, uh, with they sit there, hi girls, how are you? Do you have something trash? And I'm here to invite you to a party. There's a flyer. But yeah, pay attention, you know, I'm badly paid. So I play a kind of um, uh, a role of a, of a guy that collects the stuff in the park and makes people to some conversation can feel a bit embarrassed, but just a bit. You know. Especially if I see that they already have a bottle that is down or something. So it's a kind of my personal project. Don't, don't, don't do this in, uh, in the free time. You know. There's not kind of red. So it's, it's just to tell you that sometimes you know, it's nice to have ideas, to write the projects, to uh, submit budgets, but this is also a part of uh, pedagogy. Yeah? And then uh, as, a, as a, this platform the, in the park and the other institutions are coming, this is also just one, it's called food sharing. It's a quite big movement in, in, in Berlin now. It, it works with, uh, with the fact that our food circle is interrupted when the um, uh, when supermarket decide that something is uh, allowed to be sell tomorrow or not, yeah. So this is, for example, bread issue. The bread in, 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 in on Saturday night in the shop, the bread that is uh, very good and costs three euro, in uh, Sunday morning costs nothing because they have to remove it because on Monday comes new bread. Yeah? So there is this gap, and there is a lot of things are thrown, and this culture of throwing is something that is really uh, bothers me and many other people. So this actually is from the food sharing and they have a web platform that where you can see where they collect what and where you can pick it up. So it's all voluntary based and for free, but we give them on the market the possibility to bring in this kiosk uh, bread and not just give it to uh, other people. If students are coming from some co communal can say we need three kilo bread because tonight is party or whatever. So it's not the place where the poor people will come and take bread and there's many different things. But it's about awareness. By taking this bread, they stop you, they talk to you, they give you a flyer. So, and many people in Germany, because of this kind of economical surplus, and especially food surplus, rarely think about throwing, you know, how much we throw. You know. And not we, maybe as a consumer, but supermarkets itself. This is really dramatic, dramatic numbers are really, I mean, if you see this, you, you won't believe that this is possible in, in a country as Germany. So we communicate with and we are basically, as institution, this finger in the eyes of people that are making policies and all. We're on the, on the level of bread, but this, this goes to till, till much bigger uh, issues. Uh, can be uh, wood or can be uh, even, I don't know, some, some uh, users' labor organization. Yeah. So what, what, what is the outcome of this? It's because it's temporary. It's happened once and not many people uh, get a chance to, to communicate with these nice uh, uh, girls. Do we, we try then to transform this, this complex process of why this bread end up being abundant, although it's still good. We try to create some kind of um, booklets for, uh, uh, for community to, to understand somehow this problem and uh, to, to just inform them, not to, not to have any attempt of educating anybody, just to know how this bread that they get, which, which uh, trick is it, faster. Okay? So this is the, the communication material, and, and um, they happily managed to find some um, this food that is every day recycled. recycled or, uh, but then, then we somehow like this idea of, uh, of these um, uh, booklets that were regularly issued, and this is also cooperation in between uh, us and the uh, art school. So for art school uh, Weizensee in, in Berlin, there was very interesting topic to receive this complex uh, um, uh, project to, and this is the Department of Illustration, so they have to, although it looks like childish, it's just very interesting uh, of the real problem to illustrate before they come into professional life, you know, and then they like it and has some complex process that cannot be explained on the website or something, let's do it in this form of these booklets, yeah, and uh, this is another project, uh, another part of this, this project is uh, called Collective Construction. We produce this out of uh, Euro palette based mod modules because we have so many events and we need different modules for different functions. And uh, only one uh, important thing is that these old modules based on Euro palette use the logic of train station in which we are finding ourselves that can be removed only by one person. In our case, Hausmeister. I mean, uh, so he will come with his forklifter and just after one exhibition in 15 minutes just move 30 of them you know so it's 
it, it looks like this. So it's like, a, for example, this is just an um, um, example of one normal, what we call open house. It's a day when artists are living there, presenting their stuff. It can be just very simple podest for piece of art. Yeah? But it's, this, if you want to remove it with your friend, you will really break your back. But with this fork lifter, it goes, it goes very well. And these are becoming, after, just important to, to understand this, once, once this somebody pays for this, yeah, there is no anymore any cost. So this becomes communal infrastructure. So if you rent a place, you can get it, if you put it back on the right uh, order. So you know, uh, this, this fact that people that rent spaces or do something in the building can have these communal infrastructures that were built on somebody else's uh, event, you know, simply somebody pay already for that, this football project will explain this. So now you can, you can have it as well. So artists can use it and there is just some check-in and check-out um, paper. They say, I took 20 modules and I signed here that I'm going to bring them back and I give 20 euro. And if something is broken, your 20 euro is, goes to my beer. Uh, but uh, then you can, when you have module, you can start, start building things and it's also some kind of tribunes if you have some events, it's a very small one. But so the communal, uh, what we call communal infrastructure, can become communal event. So if you organize everything and produce for the, this whole zero cost, and you have somebody who's going to clean after, who's going to put the beamer, who's going to put these boxes back, you can get space for free. Even so, that's our concept. But if you are um, IBM, you should pay something. Yeah? So there is no price of renting the space. It's depending of your relation to the communal <coughs> infrastructure that is given to you. So it's some kind of new model we are building. It, it works and not. And um, I think it's interesting to, as a part of a, of a critical urban pedagogy, that is not just about knowledge and learning, but also about uh, tools that helps you to do this. And this is one event where this whole topic, like we here, without any, uh, with some moderator, but I'd like to say, uh, Couple of words with uh, that me personally. Besides, that I work a lot with uh, with uh, youth youth centers. I was just in a conversation with somebody today. Uh, noticed that in uh, in, in uh, Ukraine there is not idea of youth center. This is uh, very interesting for me. But this was the uh, one project I, I, I like to uh, to share is uh, about kids between 12 and 18 decide to make their own courtyard because it was dirty, ugly, whatever. And then I, I uh, have one program on Thursdays to work with them on uh, whatever they want, if it comes from idea of construction or something. And social control, because the, the uh, hypothesis of the pedagogists and me together on that day was that if they feel connected to the space they build, nobody can destroy it. You know, try to, to destroy this, they're going to smash it because it's our, we build it. You know, If state comes and build them some fun part is going to be destroyed very soon because it's in a public space. So what we did, this is the result, it's not uh, Zaha Habib, but <laughs> the process, this, the, the, the week of building this, and this, in this particular photo, 10 kids, but there were 20 of them, they, uh, they build a sense and ownership of the place. We build it, we put this in the winter, in the basement, it's our uh, creation. So I was just there as a facilitator, just you know, to help them not to cut the finger or to uh, just to, to help to pass through the through the process of building, not as a achieving something aesthetically, optically uh, attractive, but like uh, or and now they they send me new photos that they they build another 20 boxes. It's the same system I was showing you in the in the in the house. They they a summer cinema. They organize events for themselves because there is this sense of uh, of uh, ownership. So reclaiming the yard. The yard is belonging to state, but you, as you see, uh, which, which, which state? So now state gets interested in this, and they're gonna next year invest some money to create new surface, uh, 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 which now is just some kind of gravel. Yeah? So it's already uh, what I want to point out: the state will react more probably when it sees that there is uh, some kind of uh, activity. This is not a... Back to the market somehow, uh, an idea of market as a platform. This is also, people start to, to like the idea and then the, there was this proposition of the TTIP. This is this uh, big, how it's called, Transatlantic 
pact in between European Union and America where already poor agricultural people will become more poor and uh, disadvantaged. You know, this kind of standardization, monocultures, I won't bother you, but this, this also bothers U Ukraine, I think, in, uh, in general, this kind of uh, um, Monsanto monster over, uh, over your uh, uh, buckwheat. Yeah? So, and these people, uh, interestingly, uh, organized so-called schnippel disco. This is like a disco, like cutting together huge amount of vegetables with a DJ. It's a quite interesting uh, event. <laughs> Which vegetables? The vegetables that in the area of Brandenburg, this around Berlin, cannot enter the supermarket because it has two ends. The cucumber is, uh, you know, 15 degrees in left. You know, the, the, uh, the this misfits, uh, I think it's called, yeah, misfits. So yeah. these vegetables that cannot enter the, the production uh, line. And then they collect all this with uh, uh, like a two tons was last time, uh, seven hours of cutting. I think it starts <laughs> at 6 p.m. and it's really fun. Just if you're not in the onion department, it's, it's, a, it's a, uh, uh, really fun because there is a music, you know, and then it's quite good music for cutting. And then there is a, a station to watch the and I mean they we are just hosting this. Yeah. What I want to say is like a, some very very big uh, topic, like the future of our food can be really reduced to the event that, uh, and then they're making huge amount of soups. They're delivering on this anti-TTP uh, um, uh, protest day after. So it's cooked all night and then it's packed in some kind of army um, uh, infrastructures and moved in a mobile uh, way to the, and then everybody on the market, you know, on the um, uh, protest get the, nice soup from these uh, vegetables that anyway will be thrown, you know, which is totally crazy. But what we did as a market, we said, can you give us from these two tons, just 200 kilos or 100 kilos of different vegetables, which is in this earth. So we try to uh, revival this idea of food preservation that our grandmothers knows uh, well, our mothers less and we less and less. Uh, and try to to s something that Yesterday did not have any value transferring some kind of new um, knowledge exchange format. So everybody who joins the uh, production line, because it's divided in a sterilization, uh, you know, it's just a long table, imagine, can get product at the end, you know, and then learn how to make it. Yeah? So I learned, for example, how to do it. It's interesting. I'll do it next year again. Yeah? Uh, so, so jumping now totally in a different context, I don't know why I, even I shocked myself. It's like a, a, my, uh, as, you, as you see, I, I work in a places they are some kind of fucked up. So it's my destiny. And this one is the most impressive one I'm currently working. It's called Lisa Guinness. It's a post-nuclear city in a border of uh, Lithuania and Belarus. It's fantastic example of modernist uh, uh, architecture. There is just a bit in a, it's in a process of decommissioning. That means the amount of workers that was 9,000 is now 1,000. And it's in the, as you see, it's in the shape of the half butterfly. This was a crazy Soviet idea to create a butterfly on the lake. If you look longer, you'll see the butterfly. But <laughs> and then we were asking uh, uh, people on the street, we went to some summer school, I won't go the whole context, but. Uh, what is the second wing of butterfly? Because this one wing was built a nuclear power plant and the second reactor, connection with Ukraine, because the Chernobyl explosion, because it was the same type of the, of the reactor, was never built the extension of this power plant. So the, the butterfly stays disabled, you know, because of Chernobyl. Yeah? So we were asking kids, mostly, with us from the school, to imagine what could be the second part of this butterfly. Yeah? And of course, it's all runs in Russia. This is small Soviet Union there. It's in the territory of Lithuania, but people, scientists, nuclear scientists are moved from all around the, the, the Soviet Union. So the, the, the Russian language is the only one you can talk there, or English with the, with the youngsters. Yeah? And then they were, uh, uh, well, I want to point out, uh, uh, to, to present one more concept of this critical urban pedagogy, this situated knowledge. It's a quite big uh, field. It's that knowledge produced on a particular site-specific context, in a context of uh, drama of nuclear power plant, personal uh, 
uh, attitude of, of girl going from A to B, uh, our disability to talk in the same language, so you know, like a lot of site-specific factors. And it was really interesting, we came to some idea, proposed them that if, to imagine the second part of the, uh, of the battle as some kind of youth police. Don't ask me why, but we came, but it was, uh, but what I want to, to uh, show this, when this science came to narrative, we create some uh, proposals, uh, like the one uh, for a, a radio station that runs on the speakers of the of the previously uh, previous speakers that announced the uh, radioactivity uh, alarm. You know, they're there on all around in nuclear cities. They're all around. The system has to be checked constantly. So it was this job to make a, a radio inside, and it's called radioactive. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, this radioactive will be some kind of uh, youth-run. Uh, 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 it was all fun, you know? but then we came to reality uh, and say, okay, let's, let's present this idea to the people that live there and create some kind of situa situated knowledge exchange, not just say, let's uh, put some stickers or whatever. But, so this was uh, one image I like. This is the, like a one hour work together of the, of the Babushka that speaks only Russian and a German student that speaks only German. And they did an amazing job. You, you won't, won't believe it, which kind of map they produce. But this, this narrative creates with a, with a, a different language, with a totally different cultural uh, and traditional uh, So it's possible. You know, I was trying to convince uh, my students today this is all uh, possible, to work in, a, in, a, in a such a context. And imagine how unloaded is the whole, whole stuff with it. So just to, to uh, uh, jump. Uh, and then maybe so jumping slowly into the future. This was all, all what we did somehow. Some project uh, that we started already, so some uh, interesting uh, stuff that has to happen this summer, it's called Hacking Street Furniture. It's basically idea that our public spaces are hijacked from the mono, from the companies that take, that overtook the whole visual identity of the cities. In Berlin, it's just two companies are running all billboards, everything what is created is totally in the hands of some private people. Eh? So we were, uh, and they call it public-private partnership. It's also uh, very uh, uh, absurd. So we, we say, what will happen if we, on some land, create, create this communal collective cooperative infrastructure? Like, uh, this was an example of the um, hotel that runs on the rented surface. So the money is produced from this house. And inside is this hotel. Yeah? So this, this is inside of this billboard. So Artists can or uh, tourists can live inside the billboard. Billboard pays money of the you basically live for free or for a very small fee, and the part of money of this this uh, money produced per month goes to community that build it, that uh, also uh, maintain it. That uh, so basically the community takes the whole the same role as what company is doing anyway in the billboard. You have a guy employed that puts stuff. He has a car. So everything we just copy it on, on but on a, on a very micro scale. Yeah? And this is going to happen uh, this summer. It's going to be, uh, I hope, big fun, because we have to simply. It's a part of the of the pedagogical process to reclaim through building, also not just to saying this is wrong or this is right. So this is a bit more uh, radical, and we get some funding from the from the city of Berlin, which is quite unusual because they also get a bit annoyed that the the, the visual presence of Berlin is, is taken by this uh, Vol, it's one company, I'm one French and one German, you know, totally more, when they are active, I think, in Kiev also. Yeah. And then back to the youth work, it's something interesting that I want to also share, it's quite uh, also local, but we have now some new program uh, that's called Handel in Bandel, which, called, which is something like a, um, a yeah, business in change, or not business, I okay microeconomy and change and this allows uh, the young people from the school that in the time of their curriculum uh, I'm just saying this as, a, as an inspiration maybe for our connection school that the, they have to uh, in the time of their, their uh, school time they have to visit some institution can be cultural but can be also uh, something that is not school and then work with uh, in our case with the artists to develop some project on their own which will give them insight into the how work is performed, produced, wh what is work, labor, you know, you're studying and you have no idea how the one culture institution works. But they should develop project on their own, so I'm again just facilitator. So we have some now group uh, of quite funny kids, and we have this project of uh, a, a mobile kitchen that has 
just one. We bring the soup and exchange them from stories. So kids are doing urban research by just offering the soup for story. You know, so you have to give some narrative and they give you some soup and then we record some... some uh, and it's an existing uh, project already was tested by this artist and he didn't know what to do with this infrastructure and we just adopted. But what is really funny that kids start to be more interested in a video itself than this soup and machine. This is all scenography. But then they found interesting uh, things that in, in, in Germany there is, and uh, many of them that work with me are from the migrational background, and they, uh, they have something called integration test, something you have to pass to get the German passport. It's like a 33 questions, something like uh, how many oblasts there is in Ukraine, and then you say, hmm, 11, 12, there is. You know there is a round, but you don't know sometimes very precise, right? And so they are playing this integrational <coughs> test uh, uh, questions as a questions of an uh, interview and this produced a lot of uh, interesting uh, chaotic and then kind of okay you were wrong seven times but you get soup you know so <laughs> so they get some kind of this topic YouTube generation and it's very hard to uh, to catch uh, you know I'm more post-Soviet uh, creature and this you know like how they like to perform and uh, so they this called Kulturelle Bildung it's a, it's a big uh, uh, national also platform, cultural education, and we just claim that this is much better than the current integrational <coughs> policies. They are more like, aha, you are new in society, this is the box A, first language, then you go to this, this, and if you pass all these boxes, you will become a good worker and you'll be happy. This never worked well, and it's proved that from the 60s that it's not working. So we are also creating some kind of maybe new generation or new creatures, I'm not sure, but it's, it's fun. And back to the some, some more, more dramatic uh, situation, and I hope uh, uh, I'll have another five to ten minutes. Yeah, we are good with time. As you know, now the, 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 uh, uh, the, the not just in media, but also in reality, the, the big wave of refugees that end up in Germany, uh, is something that dramatically changed uh, uh, the German society, which was not prepared for, for uh, uh, this scale. It was prepared maybe for 100,000, but we are talking about million, million and 100. And this becomes now clear that the state apparatus, with its old pedagogies and uh, translator and bureaucrats, is not able just to digest this huge way. So the, there is now a lot of uh, state uh, uh, projects and money for the art institutions to do something with the idea of especially younger refugees, yeah? or some kind of marginalized, who can speak a bit of English, work or something, that one is already also not considered almost as a not disadvantage. Yeah? But problem with the refugees in general is that they end up in so-called high. This is like, a, like a, some kind of uh, space with the regulation, I once called jail or, uh, or accommodation, something in between, where you have a limited um, limited freedom, or let's say, uh, yeah, limited freedom. And f what makes people really depressive is the, the fact that they cannot work. You know, and this is a very strict law in Germany, you cannot work, uh, you are now asylum seeker and you are in danger. Because in the, according to, just to give some kind of uh, introduction, that if according to the German law, if you are asking for, uh, if you are asylum seeker, it's kind of pre-assumed that you are in danger. You know, somebody can kill you if you are from uh, Kurdistan and Iraq and, you know, like on the street. So you, you should get some small money, go to supermarket, come back and sleep there. Yeah? So this, this was the beginning of the problem of uh, and a project of one, one NGO that came to us and said, can you give us one studio? We have this project. This is one studio yeah? uh, uh, in, in our building. And they say, we want to, to, uh, to create some kind of social entrepreneurship pro uh, project. We were like, oh, mm, okay. Yeah. But then they tell us what uh, really is the core of this. And somehow the guys that, that run the space and say, let's do it, let's test it in a small scale. Idea is that old ladies from Syria that cannot speak English, they cannot move fast, they can, you know, they're really in a, in a precarious condition. They, uh, with them, uh, with uh, some artists, with them produce this kind of, uh, traditional mosaic and tablets, but the trick is that that uh, this NGO create a website to sell this online. So if you buy this tablet in America, the money comes back to the NGO and then they are able somehow to pay them. You know? 
because they did not work or the, the product was not sell or produce fully in Germany. Don't ask me how it works, but I call it financial <laughs> gymnastics. There is some, some <laughs> funny loop they, they, they do through this NGO to get this money back and they don't, uh, you know, they bring from 100% of price, this 95 go, five goes to them. So it's a really almost uh, uh, full. And the rest is they use to rent a studio from us or pay electricity or something like this. So they, they don't use it for their own uh, salary or something. And this came, came a very interesting project because it will stand, uh, become with a, uh, just connection with a, in, a, in Moabit where we are situated with the uh, closest um, Heim of these places where refugees are. And then they ask you, uh, state asking if you can um, do some more stuff and blah blah. But in the meantime, we uh, came up into some much much bigger. And with this project, I hopefully will close this uh, uh, visual bombing of you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this is, just to give also the context, this is the abundant, now it's rendered, but it's abundant ex-GDR <coughs> uh, Ministry of Statistics in the center of the city. Also, cannot be more central. Just Alexanderplatz is just, the tower is just beside. So it's, it's like a value of this property is huge. It belongs to the state. But city of Berlin wanted somehow to buy it back from the state. And then from that moment uh, uh, and the current situation came the idea that uh, institution like ours and 10 other uh, get together and uh, create a project of integrative co-living, co-existing, co-working space with a, with a part of the refugees that will not stay there for a certain amount of time, get kind of re set in a, for a German society in terms of, especially in the work, and then goes out, and then some youth center, some very interesting uh, utopian way of integration in a very dense physical uh, uh, environment, so in one building. And this becomes more like a lobby project, but it came in one moment in a high politics, and now the finance senator of Berlin is, is uh, really into dislocating some funding that already exists in the city of Berlin to buy this house that the Senate will use part of it for their bureaucracy and have a problem they work with directly in the house. So it's like a, you don't decide about somebody's uh, future by s sitting in your fancy state building, but you are together with them. And in this building, because it's called House of Statistics, we play with this uh, kind of numbers. And, but it's a Ramla board, the, the one uh, famous architecture studio, they are working on more on this concept. It's kind of trying to, to redone the whole complex in a, in a different uh, uh, manner. So you have, a, for example, the yellow is a horizontal communication, so you can move through the whole building. There is blocks of education, there is a culture, and um, uh, in, a, in a ground floor there is a housing, there is a, some kind of new idea of, uh, of uh, integration, education, and culture be one thing. Meaning, to simplify it, so if you are uh, Refugee, you're not sitting in the in the bed and waiting that somebody invites you to be relocated in another city. You basically work in a uh, whatever, uh, assisting the artist to produce the new piece because artists already need somebody to help him. And in the same time, you help lady to uh, bring the stuff from the supermarket, and you don't have to pay your rent somehow. You know, so so this 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 will be, and then give some kind of because anyway you cannot work, but you can with some of your skills pay for your flat, let's say. So this kind of uh, practicing the, 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 the ways of, uh, of uh, integration beyond the you know, uh, paper saying you can, you cannot. Quite complex, I just want to, to uh, provoke you. And then I think this might be almost close to the end, which means that, yeah, it's easy to uh, play Lego with, a few, with the destiny of people, but how to now come from this into the reality is a, is a one or two year project that is kind of now in the, in the starting phase, but uh, quite good. We invite all people that are interested. So if you are an artist from Berlin or have collect collected, you can come on these sessions. They are now happening, I think, once per month, no, two times per, per month, I think, where you, it's a kind of idea workshop, what they call it, and this uh, uh, play, place, we, we host it last time, but it's, the idea is to move from all these 10 institutions involved. And then, basically, slowly, uh, ideas are not collected, but created. You know, maybe this, what we say that is here, 
45 after three workshops jumping to 35, you know, depending on it, because it now comes really with the amount of square meters, with the with the cost of electricity, how much money we need to change the windows. You know, the data is simply coming and the project is huge. In this kind of project, the budget is clear, there is a six months, there is a, uh, seven s uh, ladies from Syria, there is a 25 tablets per day, and then it's much easier to work. But here, it's, it's really the scale that nobody is still not clear uh, how to deal, because I think it's something like, I'm going on 40,000 square meters, or something like this. So then now came, uh, car started this com campaign and lobbying and project gets bigger and now it gets get big too fast. So now it's like a really uh, another set of, um, of problems and even some companies are in, uh, interested to, to invest and this is something I'm showing you with a big excitement of not knowing what is going to happen. But I, I, I hope something something big and something as a, as a role model of how, how uh, all these things can be done. And with the spirit of uh, Valery Lobanovsky, I'm jo jumping to the last uh, uh, <laughs> slide and inviting you for a productive discussion about uh, what I try to say, uh, if this makes sense, with, I suggest some reflection on, on Kiev itself, you know. Let's, let's use this just as a provocation and see uh, what's happening in your city. I'm, I'm not new, I know something, but what I know is uh, very limited. So, uh, yeah, let's just talk in a manual. So, thank you for... Uh, I'll give you the time. Good. All time. Yes. Thank you. So, if you have any questions, we can start. Yeah, it can be question, doubt, comments, recommendation, telephone. Uh, <laughs> I can start. For example, if you have a presentation and it's good if you get an idea. And after we try to research about the project, mm -hmm. we test it on the small scale and just after we try to spread it as bigger on the bigger scale, or mm -hmm. what's the process? Process will of course be uh, somehow really uh, differ from the, um, I would say, complexity of the situation. If scale comes later as a question, but if it's really, if it's contested, if it's uh, um, in a physically bad condition is uh, so if I just take one example in the if you see the youth center there is not really major problem you know state pays for the house kids can uh, hang there but there is this problem for example in the youth centers of a, of a curriculum not being able to to answer on a contemporary needs of the kids it's created a bit like more 80s 90s you know you have a billiard and you can play yeah and what if I play seven days billiard, I'm tired of billiard, I don't want to play billiard anymore. No? So it's, it's somehow, uh, uh, sometimes the problem is almost not a problem, but can be just uh, adapted to the new situation. The problem doesn't have to be dramatic in order to start thinking to change something. You know? So that's why they, they like it, hey, uh, let, let's, uh, let's build something together, it's more, more fun. You know? so, Exactly. So, and then, yeah, I, I agree with you that the, the jumping into the scale is uh, is important, and I see the danger also, for especially of the people with the spatial sciences, you know, arts, mm -hmm. likes to uh, to think big. You know. But this is not personal problem. It's, it's a really big problem of education. That that uh, you know, like uh, you start studying and they show you Corbusier, then you end up with uh, Zanahari, then Rand Rojas, and you want to be this, you know, like it's all, uh, all stuff. Nobody wants to be pedagogical worker in a, in a kindergarten or to drive the bike, you know, so th that's, that's the, I think, the, the core of the, of the educational uh, crisis, you know, like uh, we should all be the best and big and nice. Why? You know, 
you will become a bunch of experts, you know, idiot. Yeah? This is like really, this if you want to, much people, how are you? Evaluation. No good evaluation, no money for you. EU terms. <laughs> mm. Evaluation. A forced one through the project management methodology where the founder of money is asking you to evaluate yourself. You know, and then you say, yeah, super, we have a hundred people visiting our events, but you don't say 50 are my friends. You know, like there is this kind of uh, way of evaluating yourself that can be, uh, it's just protocolarian evaluation. You know, this, I think this is happening to, I did it a thousand times and I also know how to do it and I do it very, uh, without any emotions anymore. But the most complicated is this evaluation in, inside the team. When you stop and say, okay, we did this market, how much of the uh, ownership we gave to community. You know, this is, for example, one example. We have a big crisis in after the two years of the market because it was planned that we give more and more responsibility to the community. This was in our plan. But we, at the end, did not reach it because there was nobody from community who will sign that you'll take responsibility for some things. I'll participate, I'll come, I'll do my stuff, I'll close it, but I won't take any responsibility, you know? And then there was a disbalance in between what we planned and also tell to, to founders, because the funding was a German uh, funding scheme called Soziale Stadt, you know, like a socially responsible city, so you have to give the also internal evaluation, because it's socially relevant and important project. And then we have to somehow, then we have an internal uh, crisis of uh, not knowing how to translate this um, ownership to people. Imagine you just make some, you know, uh, um, festival in Kiev in an inner courtyard, everybody's happy and cinema went well and food festival going and then inhabitants say very nice, organize next time, but we want, we don't want to do anything if there is no money, you know, something like this, you know, and situation gets then more more complicated for evaluation. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I answer your question, but I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy talking about it. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's complicated. And there is a one in one project now, it's a kind of EU project, we have one partner that is only working on the on the on the, from the beginning because in the EU project you know you do this evaluation at the end you know? mm -hmm. and they are now doing this evaluation from the beginning so their role in the team is just to constantly do this dissemination and evaluation stuff through the time so it's very interesting for us how it's gonna but I can tell you it in April 2017 <laughs> we, we know because that then will be the result so it's very interesting they basically just roll of them into to follow the five partners in the project they are sixth one they're just doing this kind of subtitling and they're involved <coughs> just in order to give evaluation but through time not at the end because in the end you can do a lot of like uh, you know uh, stuff like same with the budget you know like you were you don't know where where a three euro went and then you find something that you were copying something and you put it in a budget mm -hmm. this I didn't tell you for camera <laughs> please cut Okay. Uh, my name is Igor, and my question mm -hmm. is uh, what concerns the role of municipality, how you deal with this municipality. Uh, I mean, uh, in here in Kiev and in the whole Ukraine. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, here, here in Kiev, I don't, uh, I don't know about Lviv or some other progressive cities, like, like we used to call them. But here in Kiev, it, it, is, uh, it, it, is, it is very difficult to. to to, like, to, to obtain some room, some space, some neglected space, some private property or, or mm. some private or municipal property in order to start some social projects. For instance, if, if, you, have to, if you want to have some community space, mm. uh, we, we, we could use some library or whatever, or school, but uh, not on the 
not on the constant basis, and uh, in most cases, social initiatives, even this, uh, you know, this like, smart or uh, creative business should pay like commercial rent, mm -hmm. commercial rent, high rent. So, uh, one example when uh, uh, this uh, center for, for contemporary art, NGO, uh, they were made to pay for social. Uh, for social project for social exhibition in municipal theater, in municipal theater. So municipal theater, but not municipal theater. I mean municipality, municipality above this uh, administration of this uh, theater based on the on the podium district. They made them to pay very high commercial rent as if they were like business, some retail business. How retail business and how how could uh, like social initiatives? I mean, the civic initiatives mm -hmm. from, from, from below obtain some room, some space. Yes, this is a yeah, constant uh, drama. There is a couple of elements of this. First of all, the, the let's say, municipal level, and uh, people work there. Uh, we should not all, always look at them as a, some homogeneous mass of retard people you know like uh, we among them there is interesting people yeah problem is to get particular relation because among them there is a people that have a good thoughts and they could be multiplicators of some interesting project but it's always this project uh, problem of the fear you know like how this will you know you can in ukraine you can lose a job if you do something wrong that is not listed in your let's say duty, duty so this this fear and this here, for example, in Ukraine is much bigger than in Germany, of course, so it's deferred to the geography, there is no really key. But my first uh, uh, point is to find among this homogeneous mass interesting people. That, in our case, for example, went really good, because, for example, the, the mayor of Berlin is a bit from the, let's say, uh, central uh, right, central, with a small touches of right. So he will never support the project like uh, like uh, Tsetkau, yeah, because this is some kind of leftish, punky artist people, and also, so you don't talk to him, or you wait that he gets in the hole of uh, history garbage. But we took we uh, you, we took a good approach to the mayor of the district, mm -hmm. you know, which also has a less power, but he is a really charismatic guy and has much better connections on a. Uh, through the horizontal connections, through the through the uh, budget of the city, you know. So you have to target, you know, like whom whom you talk. You are talking with the national authorities, the district authorities, city authorities. It's also tactical, very, and also to understand your scale. For example, for uh, uh, institutions like uh, ZKU, we un realized through the time that we cannot get uh, state money because we have a space. There is, is there is some kind of rule. If you have a space, please rent it, run it. You have a value. You, you have a basically a property that can produce money. Mm -hmm. But if you go just in an EU level, they don't care about anything. They care about project itself. So we realized that slowly that we have to apply much more in the EU level projects than into into state of Germany. You know what I mean? So it's a kind of lot of. I'm just giving example of a tactical thinking where you as a cultural um, or social initiative look look for a, a funding and last but not the least not to make this answer uh, essay itself is like a find a way where you can produce money you know not always this kind of culture of uh, receiving you know like uh, the whole history of uh, cinema is built on the good bar or on the cinema you know like sell beer sell uh, stuff and you know, it's it's maybe banalization of the thing, but uh, there is a many ways to for social initiatives also to to get into into own funding. That could be small and symbolic, and can be 20% of your maybe total uh, budget or whatever, but can be really powerful tool in negotiation. Hey, look, we also we are not just kind of a receiver. We also are willing to uh, invest our time and also have some product and this product is t-shirt beer or uh, service is not is not now the question depending on the project itself so yeah i, I totally understand this more more you go into um, transitional society is more complicated to deal with uh, with uh, hyper corrupted uh, political level you know because those people they're there are not for a uh, 
good of your uh, cultural project. You know. So it's yes, it's complicated but possible. You know, struggle is is, is big. And that, that's why I think that the, the critical thinking and uh, and whole urban pedagogy is a good way to to start uh, thinking. And it jumped from the '60s idea of. Uh, some kind of you know Marxist structuralist way of uh, struggling now into into you know is uh, adapting slowly into a new time that is kind of mm, fuzzy and and fluxy uh, every day you know so. Do you think that uh, a horizontal government and model city is the future? Can you say uh, it again? I do you think uh, uh, horizontal government? Horizontal uh, government. Horizontal what government, is this? Yeah. And <laughs> model city is is the future. And which city? Modern. M model. Model. Model cities. Yeah. Horizontal government and model cities. So two <laughs> two new terms. Like the city building. And what is, for example, model city for you? Uh, Dubai or what? Uh, when uh, every building can uh, can change each other, uh, some purpose of the building. Uh -huh, uh, some design of the building can uh, can be changed uh, mm. within models, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Smart, smart. <coughs> oh, models, modeling, oh. modeling. I must say I never heard about this culture, but it's uh, good. But uh, there was the first one. The, uh, what you said? Uh, it just it, it just talks about uh, model in model interior, like in. in in God, in, in God, yeah, in mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. to show us, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I just imagine um, some kind of model cities, you know. Yeah, um, that's uh, also for me like now. Buildings, I have to think. building like uh, like uh, that blocks. You know? Yeah, they're totally adaptable to the yeah. forces. Yeah, they're. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Module cities, yes, but as you know, through the everybody who studied architecture did get sooner or later to this um, how it's called plug-in city. It was uh, uh, this whole uh, concept of uh, when was it sixties? Yeah, it's uh, crazy. Where where was this utopian idea already exists? You know, there is a crane that is moving and just plugging into the already fixed infrastructure. You know, so projects like this exist. And then, as we see, they never came into reality. I think this kind of hyper-modular and changeable is possible on a scale of a building, but not on the city, because city is a much more, I would say, complex system that can be sub uh, reduced to modularity. Maybe if it's I can say. difficult now, but maybe. It's maybe it's possible in some in some future hi uh, hybrid society where our when our brain has to become more. Uh, uh, which we are on the good way, I think, with like the smart technology. Uh, 100 years ago, music uh, uh, could be a model. Yeah, I mean, in 100 years, if we carry on with the nowadays relation with technology, we could uh, theoretically end up in this, because next level is definitely the, the uh, uh, how do you call it, chipping the body. I mean, the technology as a part of the body, this is already in the next 10 years. You know. So, brain is still uh, non, um, uh, widely non-researched, although we think it is, it's just we know something like 10-15% of, of, of brain uh, science. Yeah. So if we fix the, uh, you know, craziness of... Um, <laughs> yesterday was a, a good example, I have to tell you the a good story. We were yesterday on the stadium uh, watching uh, Dynamo Kiev Manchester United and there was this attempt of the technology to uh, uh, subordinate people to enter the stadium with their code, coded ticket. You know, ticket, it's open, you know, Super ID, uh, Euro, Euro 2012. And machine did not count that in Ukraine, also, like everywhere, people are printing tickets on their own because they bought them online. And the toner of the ticket is bad sometimes, you know. So machine cannot read this. Yeah? It, happens. it happened everywhere in the cinema, you know. What is very interesting, then you know, human undo. Then the guy is standing beside the machine and taking tickets of people, think, okay, you can go, but he knows a bit tricks, you know. <laughs> so this, till this has happened, there is no uh, modular system in any cities of the future. Because, you know, like, uh, humans have a tendency to, 
to crack the technology on an irrational uh, level. You know? and, the, and, and this situation, I must say, I like. <laughs> because it really proved the imperfection of, uh, of this human attempt to, you know, like to function, this modernist idea of, of uh, hyper-functionality, efficiency. It's no, it's it's the best, yeah, exactly, the best human poems are made uh, from, the, from the having a quality, free, no working time. We should not work eight hours, that's the problem. I, I'm a very big fan of uh, working four hours per day, but properly. But yeah, this is a, I would say your question was in, a, in a, some kind of philosophical uh, level, which is good also. <laughs> which is good, I think. Yeah, yeah, because we have to ask these questions, you know, ourselves. It's good. Thank you. I'll think. Thank you for but we need, we need, you know, we need a vodka pavilion. You know, this project <laughs> on Brodsky, like a vodka pavilion to talk about this. We cannot talk in connections. You know, this, this, uh, this needs some, you know, proper scenography for... Uh, there was uh, some hand. Uh, my name is Bazan. Uh, first of all, um, I like to thank you for such inspiring cases. Yeah, and thank uh, you for I like to uh, ask uh, the question uh, concerning uh, the role of media in such a social uh, project. Is um, any um, marketing, advertising campaign required? or uh, information could be shared within uh, communities without any technical uh, uh, means? Good, uh, good question. Thank you for uh, uh, bringing this uh, topic up. Media is uh, not should be part, but it's, uh, uh, it's definitely organic part of a communal work. But the question is how to find a good balance in between very diversified media nowadays. For example, I'll just reduce it to the back to the uh, neighborhood and market. You cannot, with uh, uh, Facebook, reach more than around 30% of people we get into the market. So you need still old good poster, yeah. you know, poster in the neighborhood. You still need it. Uh, you need flyer. And flyers are becoming cheaper in Poland, you know, like uh, you just, there's a flyer alarm that they, hey, you know, you order it and 5,000 of them are coming just from Poland in Germany, in, you know, tomorrow. If you pay extra fee of 5 euros, thank you for the <laughs> commercial. And uh, no, I'm joking, but uh, the, the palette of media uh, or knowing how the media, I was never thinking before and Generally, I'm not a big fan of, of media as a part of community work because it's a lot of uh, ask for a face-to-face -face communication. But exactly, the, the weird combo. And then the people there in the shops and the guy that is making mixer, you cannot get him if you don't go to his place. You know, in his place, he feel comfortable to talk to you. And uh, so community work is really also going, uh, uh, changing media uh, uh, radically. and. Band, if you want to have a concert and have, have the audience has to create an event on Facebook. Otherwise, nobody will spontaneously come to the concert because the concert starts in a particular time. You have to be informed when it starts. Yeah. So, m generally, not to, to make it again big, yes, media, yes, but tactical media. You know, like for whom, what, and how, in which scale. For example, this, this project is all about media. You know, it's all about putting it on a bigger level, but not avoiding having no uh, uh, good content, you know. The worst situation is big media bubble and uh, bad reality, you know. Th this is a worst scenario. But media, yes, yes. Um, this is usually the... I give this to the to younger people in, in, in our team, something like you. Yeah. Well, really, because it's different. I, I'm a bit still a bit old school understanding. For me, media is a poster or newspaper or, you know. Um, yes, but media big, yeah, yeah, big thing. Also this, this project with the billboards and few, this is all hacking media, ad busters, uh, this whole uh, part is, is very important. Yes, I hope I help you a bit, but there's no, uh, I'm, I'm just apologizing for not giving some tips or some, you know, I'm not guru. I, the, uh, what is done is done and it's just what is bad done is not shown. You know. <laughs> <laughs> just don't, don't, don't think that this is the uh, future, you know. This is, uh, this is the section through the, you know, to inspire each other, you know. You can 
do the same. So you were talking about participation as mm -hmm. an issue you're working with. Yeah, big issue. What other kinds of things you're working with? Acceptance, participation, some garbage, some transportation, what else? Mm. Inequality maybe. Because as for me, you mean uh, in a, uh, just and to be more precise, you mean in a, in a community work or if what I do in general, except no, no. because I'm not doing just participatory projects. I do sometimes arrogant artist projects where I'm not interested in any reflection. I mean, how we can practice this mm -hmm. urban pedagogy? How uh -huh. you practice? By doing projects. Yes. Uh, yeah. What topics, what issues, except what you should? Any, uh, you, I think uh, what we were practicing these days also together is any problems that bothers you. You know, it's not that I can tell you I work on this and this and this, but uh, try to, to pick up the, the problem that bothers you maybe first on a, on a very small level in your courtyard. You know, like uh, start to, uh, the problem is like uh, if you start to think immediate, uh, I, I'm, I'm in the how's it, mood of thinking on a, on a bigger problem level, but starting to spin in a very small one. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, something like this, but more kind of whirlpool. You know, like if you want to change in a one whirlpool something on the top that is changing like this, you should do it from the from down, you know, like uh, so yeah, and participation is becoming more and more problematic because the state I'm just saying from a perspective of Germany and some other uh, European countries where I was working but this model sooner or later standard mm -hmm. is that participation is nicely from the is a way of entertainment and the reduction of potential conflicts because nobody wants we are living now in this so-called post-political society where any kind of con contested conflicting positions it's not welcome from the authority because authority is turning to be this managerial way of thinking how to uh, yeah how to find uh, the smooth uh, areas in between conflicting sides how you know that's why the all if you see all the rendering of the architectural future from important companies or or normal ones in ukraine is about happiness you know, nobody is in the in the render is vomiting on the corner. There is no any um, babushka selling uh, uh, fruits. You know, like this is re removed from the from the. So you have to understand in which society concerning media we are living, and then participation becomes like, hey, we invite you from community. You know, it's a lot of people are misusing community and on purpose. Yeah. You can't, you just put a couple of stickers on the map, it's so super, you know, but in the under is a garage is already built under your uh, house, yeah? Yeah, so participation very complex and rethink participation. I, what I want to, to uh, uh, finish with is like rethink in the participation as also part of culture. You know, in Ukraine is not the same as in uh, France because there was historically no, as I understood, uh, co uh, correct me if I'm wrong. There is no culture of participatory or relational thinking in between authority and, and normal citizen. That's why this trust, tra traumatic uh, experience, tabula rasa. And of course, it's much more complicated. Here where drama is interesting. How the central bodies like you problem solving mm. by. Yeah. Okay, we will topic like uh, the role of art the state that is fucked up, yeah? It's it's more to give the images of the of the possible future. It's a really communication approach. It's more like a I I just in front of you, in the middle of the park, where you were thinking to come for drink beer and that, I give you just visual, like a teaser of the bread problem, and then you, oh, what is this? Ah, okay. Well. And then it stays in your mind. And it's not art itself, it has no any aesthetical <coughs> value or something, but this, this, this kind of visual provocation is, is a part of, uh, of my tools. I don't have any others, unfortunately. I, I'm really bad in AutoCAD. No. That's the, uh, you know, you have to deal with what you have.
Huh? Another question, super. So now it's getting uh, more, more uh, questions are becoming more complex. No, in one moment. For your presentation, um, and my question is about the earning money in social project. So if you have um, some creative idea, mm -hmm. because uh, as you uh, present, uh, for example, some kind of like seven, it's uh, like usual and known. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, right. Maybe you have uh, you experience some interesting idea, uh, another way how. To earn money. Yeah, earning money in social project is not a problem if you, you know, if you are a social worker, let's say. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, uh, interesting. It's all about now some tips which I don't have, but sometimes. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's so many things uh, we can talk maybe with a glass of wine. But um, it's really depending what is the what you are thinking when you say social project. Do you think it's, for example, is it for you public money, or is it the content of the project itself? You know, what what is for you social project? This for me is important. I think if, for example, to involve children mm -hmm. and to, to teach them uh, to uh, do some. Uh, social project to uh, change the environment, mm -hmm. to solve some mm -hmm. problem, mm -hmm. and just uh, to, uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this kind of project, mm -hmm. how to uh, help them with the idea to earn money or that level. Okay, if they can earn money from the Okay, but this is only the field of social entrepreneurship, uh, somehow, what I was uh, saying. Yes. Uh, there is a moral ethical component of this question also, you know, of doing this. It's also depending really, I cannot say yes or no or something, it depends really on the project. If, for example, the projects I'm doing with youth, there is no any outcome, financial outcome of them, except that it's proud of we make it, you know. But then it's really for the state is, uh, is they finance this project, finance means they finance also my salary, you know like all my hours of working with them. For them it's like uh, if they, through this process of knowing how to make a movie, for example, uh, if they get closer to the, some uh, potential labor, or you know, like, because this balance in between what is taught in the school and what is really skill is becoming big. You know, it's all, it was always big, but uh, now it's really, you know, you go out of the school and you end up in the working in a company and you have to restart. You have to, you know, you have feeling that you don't know anything, you know, basically, you know. Especially these kids now in Europe, they're in between 23 and 27. They're totally confused, you know, because they're part of some system that doesn't exist. The professor that taught, teach, taught them, same as in Ukraine, you know. You go now of the school and you need some more excitement things to get into labor skills. And the labor is basically, you know, close to reality that is brutal, you know. So the, the thing is that the, the, what, it, what I found good in Germany, they slowly understand that investing in a culture and art is not just this kind of representational, uh, has no representational uh, function, like we produce something nice or real, but it's more about this process of going from a dysfunctional uh, learning into, into knowing something. And if, if this is going to get money or not is not even important. Like example, in this youth center, we have a, when I was working there, I know now, we have a music studio. A music studio is just like this, something like mix, pulled, couple of microphones, and kids can, you know, do stuff. And then get liberated by making music, you know, super. And then one of them, I heard that become professionally doing music because, you know, like, uh, he realized school, this is all boring, I'll do music at the time. He was really the best one and slowly. So it basically he indirectly started to earn money from the fact that there was a music project on his own. But then he has to disconnect himself from the youth center and enter the market, so to say. So it's, you know, like this, this moment where, where is the social project uh, and where is the, where you are in, where are you in the market. It's, it's very, Smoothie. I also have one student in, uh, in Lithuania that is, uh, you know, Finnish philosophy and working as a DJ, apparently, to pay that. So, and he does not 
feel bad because he gets paid 100 euro per night to play music in some club. And then next day talk about uh, whatever, um, crisis of identity <laughs> in Hegelian uh, uh, philosophy. You know, it's all possible. We live in a very complex society. And younger you are, more complex is, of course, I understand this. Good people. Maybe chance for a last question, question that is more like on a banal level, like how do you like but anything <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sagriba? You know, something more like um, uh, Pedro, you said that you were um have been working. Last question, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's good, good. Uh, cities with uh, 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 very visible. Uh, uh, what do you think is this sense about Kiev? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah in Kiev is very interesting in, the, in this scale of fucked uh, up city. A lot of opportunity for people like me. <laughs> That's why I'm here. No, I'm joking. Uh, here is, you know how it is. When you live in the city, you you don't see its own um, potentials. I. I found it uh, interesting because it's. Um, uh, did somebody tell us? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> the one they are asking. Okay, then I wait for you. I have time now to think. Uh, but it's really last one. Uh, here, ooh, but this is maybe the most complex one. Mm. Yes. Huh? It's okay. It's happened. Better to happen now than if you are in a Portland conference in, in Holland. You know. um, hmm, Kiev. Interesting. <coughs> yeah, I think it's interesting moment now. You know, city as a city. Nice. So I like a, I like a na natural setup of Kiev. I must say this kind of, and I think not. I'm not the only one in this. Uh, uh, board, this kind of topography and I think this is really big advantage and I have a feeling that people are still not uh, seeing that as a big uh, problem. You go just to this through Hanov Island there is you know one runner and two bicycle people and some you know trash around you know like, mm -hmm. and this, this, in a, this is the most uh, kind of value. I understand also why by coming here more often because you know life becomes so complex and, and uh, struggle that this kind of future visions are you know put on a, on a side a bit. But I think it's interesting transitional moment. Now it's really uh, interesting for Kiev how it's going to develop because you know it's it's capital. It's going to grow definitely. It's getting uh, international attention. You know, so there are some factors that are very clear that, 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 that Kiev will have a some boom, you know, like not maybe radical, but also some construction, some boom, I think in a, uh, definitely soon is coming some regulation boom, won't be possible in five years to do what you do now with, uh, you know, 20 uh, story houses in the middle of the courtyard or something, I believe. But, but because not of internal, because international, uh, kind of adopting the, the EU uh, standards. This is just my projection. But I think it's an tem temporal moment, transitional moment, because it's, 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 uh, it's, it's every moment of crisis. And here is uh, interesting, there is multiple crises. You, know, you have a really uh, uh, armed conflict. You have a trans economical crisis, you know, you have a, so many crises all together in a torta, you know. Uh, you know and then other cities also have a crisis, but they're not so uh, tortellized, you know, like, uh, not, not so in the same time, you know that's what I mean? Hmm? That's money there, no money. Yeah, that's I mean, but I think it's interesting moment for a, for a big thing, you know, like, now, now it's time to think big. That's, that's why I think there is uh, this moment now, not, not to be quiet and wait if something happened. Now, you know, need some kind of really <coughs> mental Maidan, I think. This is important because you have, otherwise you will very soon get uh, my also personal uh, thing, subordinated by the local, uh, I would say, politics or, or like, uh, you cannot, you, you have no time to wait that all this 
political dinosaurs physically die. You know, you, you have no time for this. This will be 20 years. There is no time for that. You know, you have to really to. So I think this is the big potential. And if I can help, I'm in the front line. You know, like, no problem. That's why we go to Crema for. You know. Like. So it's and it's the there is a lot of space and a lot of things to do and uh, please think not just about Kiev. I think it's it's uh, it's country is big and there is for all of you sitting here unbelievable amount of projects like this that are waiting in a, in uh, you know Ivano Frankivsk or some you know smaller cities or rural area. This this is a big I think problem. Kiev will find a way through history and found uh, past much more complicated time that that now. But you know what was going to be with the Ukrainian village? I'm afraid the, uh, to to think about this future. You know, seeing some villages in the ivano frankivsk area. You know, they are really structural. In fact, that's the problem. You know, and Kiev will find a way. Uh, um, yeah. Don't think about Kiev. You know. <laughs> Do the things in uh, in um, in Enerhodar, you know, or you know, in uh, really some interesting places. You know, like uh, you know, like. Because you know they're so isolated, <laughs> abandoned in this whole national uh, politics that is, yeah. But okay, people, I think <laughs> how are we are with the time. I think I'm getting tired. Good. Let's let's do some. And please, they cut a lot of stuff from here. Was, uh, <laughs> online. I yeah. Uh, Who is Yudmila? Yeah. <laughs> Some Yudmila or somebody you know? <laughs> Good people, thanks for coming and yeah, I'm still here, you know, so we can talk, no problem. So, did you? Thank <laughs> you.